Good morning and welcome to Parting South Church. My name is Andy McIntyre and I'm the minister here in Parting South Church. In the book of Psalms, the Lord declares, Call upon me in the day of trouble and I shall rescue you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather here today in this memorial garden where we come and reflect on those whom we've lost and whom we've loved. But Lord, you say that you will rescue us and you will rescue us from death through your Son, Jesus Christ. So we pray, Father, this morning, come and be with us. Come and rescue us from our fears, from our failings, from our faults. Come and be with us, for today we call on your name. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us worship God as we gather and sing All Who Are Thirsty by Benton Brown.
we'll come back. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are here in Glasgow. And on Friday there was a terrible knife attack. So today, Lord, we pray for the people of Glasgow. We pray for peace and for calm. We pray for all who live in this great city to be welcomed and loved and respected. We pray for the families who have loved ones in hospital at this time, suffering from this terrible attack. We pray for those who are recovering, that they may be healed, made well. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and the auxiliary staff who are supporting them at this time. We pray for those who are gathered around these families who are concerned about a loved one. We thank you for the bravery of our police officers who run to danger when others run from it. We thank you for our ambulance service who attend in such scenes to deal with results. And we thank you, Father, that this city is a wonderful city, a great city, that although we have suffered tragedy in the past, tragedy unites us rather than divides us. So we pray for all who are suffering this day, and we ask you, Heavenly Father, that they will know your love and your care and your compassion. That we as a church, even in these difficult days, will be seen as a beacon of hope in times of trouble. We are only too well aware, Father, in these days of COVID-19, that there are many deaths. There are many people in hospital, there are many suffering. But today we bring the bereaved before you. And we ask you, Lord, to bring them comfort and peace. And may the words, Lord, that I use in the sermon later, Father, may it help them in their journey to trust in Jesus. For he died for everyone. Not just a few, but for everyone. We pray for those who have family in intensive care or unwell in hospital. May those in intensive care in hospital, Lord, know your comfort and peace. And may the families back home who are unable to visit or to go and see their loved one know something of your peace also that they are in the best place and getting the best medical attention. We pray for those who have family and care homes, who are struggling, unable to see a loved one. Lord, may they give their family member a holy hug today. We may not be able to hold them physically or speak to them, we can still wrap our arms around them, Lord, in a spiritual way. So, Lord, as we give them a holy hug, may the arms of Jesus himself wrap their arms around our loved ones and ourselves, so that we may be united in Jesus Christ. So we come to you, Heavenly Father, and we give you thanks for Jesus Christ, for his life, his death, and his resurrection, and his ascension into heaven, where he now sits at your right hand, interceding for every one of us. Lord, whatever we may face today, whatever troubles and trials and tribulations come our way, may we walk that way with Jesus. Not just today, but tomorrow, in the week ahead, in the months and years to come, until one day we meet with him in glory and see him face to face, for then we will know it was truly worth it all. So here is now.
now, Heavenly Father, as we come to you and see together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The prophet Joel, in chapter 2, verse 32, and in the letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verse 8, and in the book of Acts, in chapter 2, verse 2, it says this. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Isn't that a wonderful verse for our own salvation? But there is even a lot more behind this verse than salvation. Because when we are saved, we have peace and hope and love in our hearts. When we are saved, we can call on the name of Jesus and he will come and answer and he will help. This week, the Lord gave me only part of this verse for my sermon today. Specifically, the word everyone and then who calls on the name of the Lord. And as you listen to this sermon, can you keep those two thoughts in your mind? Everyone, that includes you. And who calls on the name of the Lord, that you can call on his name. How has your week been? Good or bad? Went well or struggling? Excited about the easing of lockdown? But apprehensive about the easing of lockdown and all that faces. Well, to be honest with you, my week hasn't been all that great. It's been a bit of an emotional struggle for me. My mum, who is 82, and many of you know her, she has Alzheimer's for about two years now. And she had a fall about two months ago or so. And although she was okay and she had a few bumps and bruises, nothing seemed too untoward. She recovered quickly and recovered well. However, last Friday, just over a week ago, she began to struggle to walk. And slowly over the weekend, her ability to walk deteriorated. Last Tuesday morning, when I went to visit her to give her her breakfast and her, her morning medicine, she was stuck in her bed. Her hips and her back had basically seized up. She was able to move her legs from the knees down. She was able to move her arms and her neck and her head. But she couldn't sit up. I tried to help her up, but she screamed in pain. So I looked at her and said, Mum, I'm going to have to call an ambulance. And my mum, who is a fighter and a strong willed woman and stubborn at times, looked at me and said, Yes, son, call the ambulance. She is now in hospital recovering and she's recovering well. Nothing is broken, praise the Lord, and give thanks to God for that, for answered prayer. But there's still issues there that need to be dealt with. I believe that her home is unsafe for her to go back to. Unless, of course, a full care package is put in place and the support that she needs is there. I'm now in the process of working with the NHS and the social work department and putting together a package that makes my mum allowed to go home and to be safe. As I was preparing this message for today, there is lots of positives and negatives facing my mum, my family and myself in the days and weeks ahead. And of course, COVID-19 doesn't help. I'm unable to go and visit her in the hospital. No one can go and visit her. And she's not very good with the phone. So 
So we've lost basically all contact, except for that through messages from nurses and hospital staff, which we're grateful for. This week has been particularly hard for me. And no doubt for my mother, who's a little confused by it all, and also my family as well. Not only do we have the situation with my mum, but last Saturday my wife's maid, her aunt Sylvia, passed away. She lives down near Canterbury, and given all the lockdown rules and regulations, we are unable to attend. My uncle George recently came out of hospital and is recovering at home. And our oldest daughter, Catherine, is recovering from a slip disc. And she has three young children to look after. And then to top it all, our youngest granddaughter, Emily, who was only one last week, got her jags on Friday and has not reacted well. But in our own experience, me and I, as mums and dads, as grandparents, know this often happens to babies after they get their first jags. So it's a waiting game until she recovers. But that doesn't make it easy. As a family, we would greatly value your prayers at this time because it is all a bit of an emotional roller coaster. In saying all this, I'm also conscious that I am not the only person or family who is facing similar challenges in the past or even today within our own families. Many of you are facing similar troubles, similar challenges, maybe different challenges, but you're still facing challenges. And I pray for you and your family today and every day, as I know you pray for me and my family as we walk this journey together. So today's sermon is not about poor me and all I'm facing. But I share these stories with you to give you a bit of an understanding of where I'm coming from today. So it's not about poor me, but it's about how we find that inner strength to cope in the days of our trials and tribulations. Whom do we call on for help? Whom do we seek when we're lost and confused? Who's the one that we can turn to when we're struggling? From the beginning of time, God has always wanted to be in a relationship with the crown and glory of his creation, his people. He's always wanted to be in conversation with us, listening to us, helping us, speaking to us, guiding us, supporting us, loving us, dare I say it, forgiving us. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 50 verse 15. And call on me in the day of trouble and I will rescue you. Psalm 91 verse 15. The Lord says, He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honour him. In fact, throughout the Old Testament, there is verse after verse after verse after verse where the people are called to call on God, to come and to help to support them. But this just can't be a one-way street. This has to be a two-way action. Yes, we can call on the name of God and he will help. But we should be calling on him all the time, not just when we're in trouble. I often refer to God as my heavenly father. And when I was thinking about that during the week, I was also thinking about me and I's two daughters, Kathleen and Michelle. We've been blessed with two wonderful daughters and three grandchildren, Chloe, Josh and Emily. And over the years we have come to realise something about our daughters and now starting to realise that our grandchildren are following in the same footsteps. If they have an emotional situation that needs dealt with, they call mum. If they have a particular practical or a financial situation that they need help with, they call dad. 
That's what children do if they need help. They should be freely able to call their parent and talk to them about anything. And what do we do when they call us? Do we turn them away? No. Do we refuse to take their call? No. We listen. We listen to their situation and we advise in the best way we can. We move heaven and earth to look after them and to support them. And that is what God does through his son Jesus Christ who offers us his help today. In the Old Testament, the people were to call on God the Father, and God the Father responded to meet their need. When they were thirsty in the desert, he provided water. When they were hungry, he provided manna. He provided the security that they needed when they were struggling. But we live in the days of the New Testament, so we are asked to call on God's Son, Jesus. Yes, God is still there and God is still listening. But the way that he mediates now is through his Son, Jesus Christ, who brings our messages of joy and happiness to the Father, but also our struggles. Jesus says, call on me when you are in trouble and I will help. Call on me when you need to talk, and I will listen. Call on me when you need advice, and I will give you the best advice ever. Call on me. In fact, call on me even if you don't need me. Keep in touch. If you have good news, then share it. If something makes you laugh, then tell me. Make time for me. Make me part of your life. Please just call on me. I don't know how many of you are on Facebook, but we have a family Facebook page. We use it on Messenger. And anything that the family does, humorous, fun, laughter, any funny picture or anything that's happening, we share it with each other. So we share the good times with one another and we also share the struggles. And that's a message from Jesus today. It's whatever you may be facing, good or bad, funny or laughter, tears or sadness, and talk to him about it. Bring it to him. You see, one of the biggest problems that we have is that we don't want to bother God or Jesus. We think our problems are too trivial. And one of the things that we often think that is God is too busy or Jesus is too busy for me. They won't help someone like me, a sinner, someone who makes mistakes. In fact, I can sort it out my own way. I was thinking about this after last week's sermon about prayer and about my own confession that I struggle to pray at times. But boy, was that a sermon at the right time for me. Because I know my mum's safe in the arms of these doctors and nurses who are looking after her well and auxiliary staff. But we also need Jesus because he'll bring the spiritual support that we need at this time. So I have spent more time in prayer this week than I can think of over the last number of years. Because in my weakness it is Jesus I turn to to find my strength. It is in my despair that I turn to Jesus and find my hope. I have found that a great encouragement this week. And that's the only reason why I'm able to stand here today. It's not in my strength, but in the strength of Jesus, who asked me to share this story so that you too will turn to him and find strength in your time of need. And let's be honest with each other. It is only when we are truly in the mire, when we truly know there is nowhere else to turn to, that we turn to Jesus. And very often afterwards we reflect, I wish I did that sooner. Today, do you need to call on him? Not just on the name of Jesus, but on the person of Jesus. 
And if you need to do that today, then pause this video right now and go and call on him right now. Having Jesus' presence in your life and in your situation is more important than any words I can offer you today. So just pause it. Go and speak to him. Call on him. And when you're ready, come back. If you are still watching or you have just come back, listen to these words of Jesus. Matthew 11 verse 28. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The Jewish nation were under the rule of the Roman Empire in the days of Jesus, and they were brutal to the Jewish nation. The soldiers were brutal and cruel to all those who crossed their path. And on the other side were the Pharisees, the Jewish religious leaders. Jesus called them hypocrites. Now not all of them were hypocrites because some were friends of Jesus, but most of them, the vast majority, were hypocrites because they were more interested in themselves and their religious rituals than the health and well-being of the people. Jesus saw how poor and physical, emotional, and especially physical and spiritual health that the people were under the Roman and religious rules. And he declared to them, do not go to the government for help, for the can. Do not go to the religious leaders who sit in the high places and lord it over you, for they can't help. He says, come to me. Come to Jesus, all who are weary and burdened. Come to Jesus and he will help. In scripture we read about what happens when someone comes to Jesus. The blind came to him and left with their sight restored. The lame came and left skipping as they walked away with joy in their heart. The mute came and left praising God. The demon possessed came and were set free. Those with leprosy came and were clean. Lazarus was dead and he walked out of a tomb alive at the voice of Jesus. A woman was bleeding for twelve years who touched the hem of his garment and was instantly healed. A rip-off merchant called Zacchaeus came to Jesus and left richer, not in money but in love and in forgiveness. A woman was charged with adultery. Jesus stood between her and her accuser and she left forgiven. Go and sin no more. Five thousand plus sat before Jesus hungry. Another time four thousand plus sat before Jesus hungry. And Jesus fed them till they were full and there were baskets of bread left over. Peter's mother-in-law had a fever. Jesus healed her and she got up and made him dinner. He eats with sinners, he silences demons, he walks in waters, he calms the storms, he heals the wounded, he raises the dead, he died on the cross and he rose from the tomb. Why wouldn't you call on him in your time of trouble? In your time of weakness, when you're weary and burdened, what's stopping you? As I draw to a close, Matthew 7, verse 7, Jesus says, Ask and it will be given to you. And then in verse 8, For everyone who asks, receive. Then James, the brother of Jesus, wrote this in James chapter 4, verse 2. You do not have because you do not ask. You do not have because you do not ask. Jesus is asking everyone to come to him and to ask whatever you need. Today, do you need to ask? For here is the thing. You cannot receive unless you ask. So call on him. Call on the name of Jesus. For if you are like me today, weary and burdened, for everyone, notice that, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord 
will be saved. That means you. That means me. Well, why don't we do that right now? Let us call on the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Today, is that you? You're weary of a situation. You find it tiresome. And you don't know what to do. Is that you today? You are burdened with something. And you don't know who to turn to for help. See, it doesn't matter what it is. But what matters is who you turn to. For you do not have to carry your weariness or your burdens. For Jesus says, come to me, all, everyone, and he will give you rest. Now the old saying, a problem shared is a problem half. Why not come to Jesus today? And here's the good news, if you don't know Jesus and you've somehow stumbled across this service today and something's impacting you and you want to know this Jesus, then remember what we said at the beginning. Everyone, including you, who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus and you will be saved. And by that action, you will have access to all the wonderful blessings that he offers you. But even more so in your time of trouble, he will be with you, for you will not be alone. Again, as I said earlier, if you need to just stop this video right here and now and come to Jesus, Seek him in your life. Bring him your problem. Just stop the video. I won't be offended because I won't even know. But the work that you have to do with Jesus is more important than hearing my voice or singing a song. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that we can call on him. We thank you that he is there to help us and to guide us through the power of his Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, that you so generously allowed your Son to come and to be with us here on this earth. We thank you that he now sits at your right hand, interceding for us at this very moment. We thank you, Father God, for you are a father who loves all his children. Regardless of what we have done, where we have been, the mistakes we have made, we know that we can come to you through your son Jesus and say sorry, that we are forgiven, restored and made whole. So give us the courage to come and to call on the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining me today in worship here in Parkett South Church. And in a moment we will conclude by singing a wonderful song by Robert Critchley. It is called My Troubled Soul, Why Soul Weighed Down. But first, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. Shalom. I'm
troubled soul My troubled soul Why so weighed down You were not made To bear this heavy load Cast all your burden Upon the Lord Jesus cares He cares for you Jesus cares, it's true Jesus cares, he cares for you, and all your worrying won't help you make it through, cast all your burdens upon the Lord, trust again, and trust again. I'm leaning. 